User passwords can be secured using group policy. I'm on a domain controller and I'm going to go to Tools and Server Manager and open up Group Policy Management. Next, I'm going to go to the default domain policy, right click and choose Edit. And I'm going to expand the computer policies, followed by the Windows settings, then the security settings. Then I'll go to account policies and the password policy. And here are all the options for all the different types of password policies. We have the enforced password history, so that way users cannot keep using the same passwords over and over. Now, 24 seems like a lot. That would mean that the user would have to remember 24 different passwords before they could start over again. So you may want to choose something like five on that. And I'll click OK. Now we've got the maximum password age. By default, it's 42 days. And you can go a lot longer than this if you want. If you have a really good password, there's no reason that you would have to change it that often. The minimum password age is to keep users from changing the password too quickly. If that happens, it's more likely a hacker did it than the user themselves. We have a minimum password length of eight characters. I'm going to double click on that. Microsoft recommends the maximum amount of characters, which in this case would be 14 characters. It makes it a lot tougher for the users to remember, so you don't have to go 14 characters, but it certainly does make it a lot more secure. I'm going to double click on it and just go right back to eight characters. The default is seven. Now I'm going to go to minimum password length audit. And this simply audits when a minimum password length has not been met, and it'll show up as a log file. Password must meet complexity requirements. This is one of the more important ones here. You want to make sure that this is defined and enabled. By default, it is disabled. And what it does is it requires users to have at least one uppercase and one non-alphabetic character, for example, that you see right there. Then you have the option for storing the passwords in reversible encryption. And this is going to be for certain applications that require that. So it's not always going to be needed. So I'm going to choose disabled, but you can certainly enable it if you find there are certain applications that require that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and try to change a password for a user to something that is not going to be in compliance. So in Active Directory Users and Computers, I'll go to Users, and I'll just choose Sally, for instance, and I'll choose Reset Password. And I'll just type in 1234, 1234. And we'll click OK, and it says, sorry, but that it does not meet our complexity requirements or even the length requirements. So I'm going to try something else. I'll try at least eight characters. And now I've got a really long password includes upper and lower case and some numbers and special characters. And now our user's password has been changed. Adding complexity and additional character requirements definitely make a user's password even more secure. But to add additional security, it's a great idea to add multi-factor authentication. 